So the dosing of Temidar in newly diagnosed GBM patients uh, basically takes two forms. Uh, there's upfront when we dose Temidar with radiation. And for everybody in the audience who's hearing this, we have to understand that when the Canadians and the Europeans designed this trial, no chemotherapy had ever been shown to impact the treatment of GBMs. And what Roger Stoop in, in Switzerland and with guiding it together with the Canadians, he decided that since surgery and radiation were really the only two things that worked, we know some chemotherapy agents, i.e. alkylating agents, will enhance the effect of radiation. So he wanted to use this as a radiation sensitizer. And one of the things to remember with the original trial, because it was not done in America, so I think a lot of people are confused how to use Temidar with radiation, you really need to give the Temidar an hour before radiation. The half-life of Temidar is in the order of like three, four, five hours. It doesn't last in your system. Really, it's out of, the, out of your system within 24 hours. So I've noticed when I've gotten referrals from um, community oncologists, sometimes even other major tertiary care centers, that they're telling patients to take the Temidar at nighttime when they get radiation. But then it'll be out of their system by the time they get the radiation the next day. So you have to realize it's a radiation sensitizer. You want to take it an hour before the radiation. So it's in the bloodstream, it's in the body, it's attacking the tumor. And then, you know, the, the radiation is affecting it too as well. You have to take it on an empty stomach because, you know, if you have food in your stom uh, stomach, it decreases the uh, absorption of Temidar. So when I tell people, take your anti-nausea pill an hour before the Temidar, don't eat for an hour, then take your Temidar, don't eat for another hour, and then have your radiation. And then you do that for six weeks. The other thing to remember, and I joke around with my radiation oncology uh, uh, colleagues all the time with this, is although you only receive radiation Monday through Friday, because you know my radiation oncology buddies feel that tumors don't grow on the weekend, I don't feel that way. So as your oncologist, take your chemotherapy on Saturday and Sunday too. So you take the Temidar seven days a week. On Saturday and Sunday, you can take it whenever you want if you want to take it on bedtime. But Monday through Friday, with the radiation, I want you to take it an hour. I want the patients to take it an hour before uh, their radiation. Now, after you finish that six-week course so, uh, of uh, uh, radiation, the patient finishes that six-week course, they get a month off. And then they start the adjuvant treatment of Temidar. Now, in the original trial, they did it for six months. And that was because, essentially, you know, they weren't really sure how long to treat people. Uh, there were some cost um, concerns, too, because, again, you're dealing with uh, more of a, a national health care system. So they basically budgeted for, like, six months after uh, the six weeks of radiation. And they showed the, the survival advantage with that. In America, um, I've seen people use it for a year. I've had seen some patients... You know, before 2015, you know, we, all we had was Temidar, so I've had some patients go on it for years, you know, and, uh, and I think that's something that people can talk about. But the dosing schedule on, in the adjuvant setting is five days out of every 28 days. So I usually, you know, I meet the patient once a month, I check their blood counts, check how they're doing, check their labs, and, and then, you know, we dose them based on their height and their weight. The first month, we dose at 150 milligrams per meter squared, and uh, see how they tolerate it. And the next month, if their blood counts tolerate it, then we'll increase the dose of 200 milligrams per meter squared. Uh, and how, whether or not you want to go past the six months or not, I know most people in the United States try and do it for a year. Sometimes people go a little bit further. Uh, that's up to really the, the oncologist, base, and it's really based on anecdotal evidence. But the trial itself was for six months. MGMT uh, methylation status is an important um, prognostic and predictive factor in glioblastoma and we now recommend that uh, every patient who um, does have newly diagnosed glioblastoma is tested for this mutation. Um, we know that um, addition of uh, temozolomide to patients who do have the methylation status significantly uh, prolongs survival. Um, so for that reason, um, testing is crucial because that again allows us to uh, prescribe uh, appropriate therapy to the patient. In patients who do not have methylation, the benefit is uh, uh, rather minimal and, and depending again on the situation, it may not be a bad idea uh, to um, completely uh, bypass um, a provision of temozolomide to patients who do not have uh, the methylation as the toxicity uh, of the treatment might, might actually outweigh the benefit uh, to the patient. Um, uh, so at this day and age, I think that uh, in every single case of glioblastoma, uh, MGMT methylation status should be assessed uh, because it's uh, really um, important and crucial in clinical decision making.
the standard of care treatment for newly diagnosed patients with glioblastoma is what we call the STUP regimen. And this is the regimen that under the guidance of Dr. Roger Stup was established and approved in 2005. It consists of six weeks of radiation with daily demazolamide. The total dose of radiation is 60 grays. They are giving two grays a day, Monday to Friday. So that's how we come to the number of 60. The chemotherapy with temozolomide is given every day, including the Saturday and Sundays. We uh, allow the patients at the end of the six weeks a two to four weeks break to recover from the side effects of the radiation and the daily temozolomide. And then the patients embark in another six to 12 months of therapy with temozolomide. For this second stage of treatment, the patients receive the temozolomide at a higher dose five days every 28 days. The treatment is very well tolerated, both the one that we do with radiation and the one that we do after the radiation. We see mild side effects, some of them being local skin reaction because of the radiation, fatigue, and uh, nausea, and decrease on the blood count such as platelets and white cells. When we move on, the Temadar is a single agent uh, we again tend to see um, fatigue, we tend to see changes on the blood counts, we tend to see nausea, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, and also we uh, have seen uh, constipation. So those are the general side effects. They are less than 8% of the patients for each individual side effects, and in general this treatment is very well tolerated. It is important for us as physicians sometimes to prevent those side effects. So in our practice, we usually give a nausea medication to be taken every day before the chemotherapy is administered. And this way, uh, we reduce the incidence of nausea in our patients. For uh, the constipation, it's important to have a dietary consult on board and instruct the patients how, how can they prevent it with an increased uh, consumption of fibers and fruits and uh, an appropriate intake of water. For the low uh, blood counts, our practice is to follow the blood counts every week during the radiation. And during uh, the temozolomide uh, cycles, which take place after the radiation, we usually get uh, lab work at day 21 and day 28 of every cycle. And we restart the chemotherapy only if the blood counts have recovered. If they have not recovered completely, we have the choice of waiting and restarting the chemotherapy after they have recovered. And if uh, the chemotherapy side effects are in rare occasion quite profound and it takes long time to the patients to recover or the counts go very low, we also reduce the dose of chemotherapy for the next cycles.